Jason Johnson, I couldn't wait just to get your take on this. I, I wanted to start here for you, my brother. I know we I talked have... about this. Now, now we have a trailer. Just, just give me, give me. Your, are you looking forward to it? Are you nervous about it? Uh, are, are you worried about the artistic integrity? What's up? I have thoughts. I have feelings. I have concerns. I know the plot. I know some people have I, I, I got some inside track on what's happening. So I'll say this overall, and I'm always going to add this until the day I see this movie and the day I leave the theater smiling. I still think they should have recast Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. Just want to put that out there. That being said, the trailer looks nice. It looks entertaining. It's apparently going to be the longest MCU movie ever. They said it's like it's got a longer length than almost any other movie. The, the, the special effects so far look significantly improved from the original Black Panther. I, I love how they put Namor together. I love his 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 throne room and everything else like that. So I am looking forward to this movie. I think I will be highly entertained, but I do think that not having a centralized hero in the film could have an effect on my enjoyment. We'll see. We will see because it ain't like I'm not gonna go. I just don't know that I'll be as excited having to watch a movie where we all know that Shuri's gonna end up being Black Panther anyway. That's just that's just my feeling so far. But the trailer looks the trailer looks hype. Just saying. Is it unfair? Because you know we've had different Bat Batman's, right? You know what I mean. We we've had different people play the character, but I think yep. that's slightly different when you're in a universe. Right when you're in, you know, because there's different iterations of the Batman series. It's the Tim Burton Batman. It's the Christopher Nolan Batman. It's this this last guy. I can't think of his name because I didn't. I, I haven't seen the movie yet. But um, who would you have cast? Guy. Robert. Pattinson. No, seriously, Robert Pattinson was. Yeah, was, yeah. That, that, was, was, that was that was the director. That was right. Gothman of, that we just saw earlier this year. And an absolutely terrible movie where he solved no crimes whatsoever and had no chemistry, had greater chemistry than Alfred than he actually had with Catwoman. But don't get me started on the boring man, the goth man that we saw earlier this year, which was darker than an episode of Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, right? Just terrible. Terrible overall film. And it was super duper complicated. Not that we don't have that problem. But that being said, that being said, so, uh, I will... Good. Yeah, yeah. So who would you cast? I want you to answer that who question. Would who would you cast as T'Challa? Who's T'Challa? Oh, uh, Yaya, uh, Yaya, Yaya Mateen, who plays um, Black Manta and who was in uh, Watchmen. I would, I, would, I would cast him as T'Challa in a heartbeat. I, I, like, I like his structure. Physically, he can do it. He's got the look. I think he has a different perspective uh, that he could sort of bring to the acting. He's tall enough. I, I would have cast him. Or you go find an unknown, and you do some sort of switch there. Uh, but that's what I would have suggested. Now, what I also say, though, and I've always said this, and I thought this was great. You know, your friend, colleague, uh, Jamel Hill, did an interview uh, with, uh, uh, with M'Baku, uh, with Winston Duke. And he said, look, you know, we would have had problems with somebody else in that role, given how close we were to Chadwick Boseman. And I respect that. I actually yeah. think... If yeah. anyone had a reason, the the idea that the cast is like, we can't build that chemistry with somebody else, that is the only justifiable reason that I can actually think of. And that's the first time I've heard a cast member say something like that. So if from a production standpoint, if from a let's put this movie together standpoint, they're like, we can't replace this guy. It ain't going to feel right to the cast, not because of some high-end corporate decision, not because of some overwrought sense of nobility or something else like that, but because they literally just didn't think it would work within the cast. That makes sense to me. I can disagree with it, but it actually makes sense to me. And I, I thought that that was a substantive answer. But again, you know, there's billions of people in Hollywood who are super duper talented. I do think it was possible to do. Just saying. I, I, I want to uh, switch gears, talk about what's possible and impossible. If you had told me uh, two or three years ago that Herschel Walker was going to be in a uh, contested, competitive Senate race with uh, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, <laughs> and that and and that it was not going to be a blowout. That Herschel <laughs> wasn't going to be blown out. I would say, okay, something's wrong here. What does it tell us? What's the lesson? What's the takeaway? The Herschel Walker, despite what he says, what he does, what he has accomplished, who he is. Say that he is. This is still <laughs> who, that, he that, is? who he is. That this is still a race. Why is this 
still a competitive race, Doc Johnson. Because white racism has metastasized into not just disliking black people, but wanting to shame and embarrass and rub black people's faces in white power. What do I mean by that since we're talking about an actual African-American candidate? There's no way in hell that Herschel Walker could have gotten a nomination in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party before Barack Obama got in office. Not a chance. It's not like his background is unknown. This is a black man who is non-eloquent, who is inexperienced, who has a history of beating and abusing white women in Georgia. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. We are still a country where large swaths of the population do not like interracial dating. Get angry if they see black men and white women on TV. Send nasty messages to professional athletes if they have non-black wives. And this man has a history of threatening and abusing white women. So how does he end up getting a nomination? Because the Republican Party is so angry about having had Barack Obama that it's not just that they want to make sure that black people have no power. They want to show us how much they disdain us which means let's find black people who are so repugnant, so offensive, so terrible, that we will suffer through how offensive they are if it shows you how much we hate you. That is literally the only reason you could end up with someone like Herschel Walker. He is not competent by any stretch of the imagination. And if you just wanted a rubber stamp for Mitch McConnell, there's half a dozen other conservative MAGA Republicans that you could go for who don't say that the magic air from America ends up in China and who don't pay for abortions with a check. You talk about, I mean, the, it, it's it's the wire. Bruh, you taking notes on an MF and criminal conspiracy? You're paying for an abortion with a check and a card? What is your problem? That's not even missing player one-on-one. That's fool that has no future one-on-one. That is what we have in Herschel Walker right now. And when your own son, who's been caping for you for months and months on end and also trolling everybody else and saying all sorts of anti-LGBT nonsense, when your own son finally flips on you and says, enough is enough, and you have to respond and say, I love my son, like a scene from Heather's, I still love my gay son that I've been offensive to and I didn't care for, right? Because that's essentially what he's doing. I, 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 find it, I find it so offensive that a member of an anti-LGP, anti-abortion, anti-Black party has taken advantage of so many other people to justify his campaign. And when it's finally blowing up at the end, it's not going to have that much of an impact on the vote because he's still going to get 44 percent of the vote because there's that many voters in Georgia who hate black folks. Wow. Damn. Because I was <laughs> my, my thing was going to be, it doesn't seem like he's going to win the race. Right. It doesn't oh, seem like he's going to win. He's not. But the number but will be closer than it sh than than it should be. Right. So my question is. What would he have to do for the Republican Party to disassociate themselves from him? Nothing. What's the breaking point? What's the, is there a Absolutely breaking point? Absolutely nothing. There is nothing that he could do. First off, as a practical matter, if he were to actually drop out of the race right now, it, it's too late for them to actually replace him. But, but what you guys got to understand is that the Republican Party, it is not a party anymore. I've been saying this ever since. I always talk about the fact that January 6th, I was on the air with Mike and Mike when January 6th happened. They are no longer a party. They're a dime store front for a terrorist organization called MAGA. That's all this is at this particular point. They do not care about policy. They do not care about ideology. They simply want to maintain control and increase their level of power. So there's nothing Herschel Walker could do. Herschel Walker could be caught on camera, have a viral video on YouTube of him clubbing baby seals, drinking their blood, and spitting it out <laughs> on the ground saying Donald Trump rules, and they wouldn't do anything. You could find a video of him physically abusing some of the women in the past and him cheering about it. You could find him in the back, in the back window of an R. Kelly video. They would not abandon this man. If you can have a president of the United States... And we're talking about a man with a history of violence here. We're not talking about allegations. We're not talking about speculation. He has a history of violence yeah. against women that has been reported, that has been detailed. But if you had a president of the United States who bragged about grabbing women in the crotch and nobody cared and evangelicals surrounded themselves around him, it's because you recognize that they're not worshiping policy. They're not worshiping conservatism. They're worshiping whiteness. And anybody who wants to get along with that game, just like Herschel Walker, he'll run straight through that line and cape for them just like anybody else out there. Wow. Wow. I, you know what? I want to say, I want to sign up for your class.
<laughs> next semester, spring of 23, I'm coming in, visiting students at Morgan Feel State. Let's go come in. Class is open. Class is open. Look, and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this, and I want to I want to make sure we, we, we get to this, because I knew we were going to talk about Pat Stafford at some point. I want to just add this. We're at an interesting <laughs> moment, not just in sports, right? Not just in sports, but in politics. We're in the last 30 days before important midterms are going to determine everything. And we're in the last most important period in the NFL season. It is week five, and we got 15 teams that are two and two. Now is where we're going to decide who's going to move ahead and who's going to be nonsense. Hold on. Don't go I anywhere. Don't, in the ranks. don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to have you come around and talk about your boy Stafford. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Stafford. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.